Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with Blackberry Buckle. That's right, you know it's an old-fashioned fruit dessert with a name like that. But think about it, back in the day, they didn't have the internet or food bloggers to tell us what to call things. So they would name stuff like this after common household items like fasteners. You know, you got your strawberry snaps, your raspberry zippers, and what we're doing today, the Blackberry Buckle. And in addition to the folksy names, one thing that's usually true about these old-time desserts is that they're usually very simple to make. So let's get started. In step one, we're going to macerate some blackberries with sugar. So I have about three cups of blackberries here, which I've rinsed off and drained pretty thoroughly. It's okay if there's a few drops of water on there. And we're going to dump that into a mixing bowl, to which we're going to add a good amount of sugar. And if you're not trying to win a James Beard Award for food video, you can just dump it all in and not worry about adding it gradually from different angles. And then in addition to the sugar, we do want a few drops of vanilla extract. And that's going to be it for this step. So we'll take a spoon and we'll mix that thoroughly. And what's going to happen, that sugar is going to start to draw out all those amazing juices from the blackberries, which as you'll see is going to make this buckle extra moist and delicious. So we'll go ahead and give that a real good mix. And then we'll simply set that aside for about 15 or 20 minutes while we put together the batter, which is also very easy. In fact, this whole recipe is great for people that are good at throwing things in a bowl. So we're going to start with some all-purpose flour. And can you use whole wheat? I have no idea, but just use what I'm telling you. We're also going to add some white sugar, and then one optional but mandatory ingredient, a pinch of salt. I know some of you think that's odd because this is a dessert, but I do like to add a pinch of salt. And then I went ahead and added one very untraditional buckle ingredient, some almond meal, which is just ground almonds. We're also going to want some baking powder, not soda. Baking powder. And I'm going to go ahead and take a whisk and mix those dry ingredients together. You know we don't sift anymore, right? So we'll give that a stir. And while I was mixing mine, I remembered something. That just like almonds go well with blackberries, so does a little touch of cinnamon. So I stopped, I added a little sprinkle, and I mixed that in. Which is why I'm telling you, as you're stirring things, don't just daydream. Think of what you may have forgotten, or what else you might like to add. But anyway, I went ahead and stirred that in. And then it's time for the wet ingredients, or in this case, wet ingredient. Which is just going to be some whole milk, although I believe I used 2%. And we're going to go ahead and pour that in. And then we're going to mix that up until it's just combined. And as you'll notice, I'm using a spatula. You'll probably have a little less chance of overmixing with that than a whisk. But it's really not that big of a deal unless you really, really overmix. Which, you know, why would you? So I'm just going to use a spatula. And I'm going to stir that until it's just combined. And it's going to look kind of like a pancake batter. Which is just about what you want. So that looks good. We'll just set that aside for a second. And move on to the melting of the butter. So in a small saucepan on medium heat, we're going to melt some unsalted butter. And when that butter's melted, what we're going to do is we're going to pour it into the bottom of our baking dish or pan. So I'm going to pour that in. And then here's what's going to go down. We're going to take that batter and we're going to dump it in right on top of the butter. Don't worry if it looks weird. It's totally normal. Just relax. And once we poured that batter in, do not give it the old shake a shake nor give it the old tapa tapa. Just simply take the corner of your spatula and kind of coax that batter around, distributing it as evenly as possible. So something like that. We don't want to mix the butter in. We just want to kind of even the batter out. And like I said, it looks kind of weird, but don't worry. When this goes in the oven, that butter knows what to do. Okay? And then once that batter's set, we're going to go ahead and grab our blackberries. And we're going to go ahead and scatter those over the top. Kind of using the butter as a border. You heard me. Use the butter as a border. We don't want those berries too close to the edge. When this bakes, we kind of want to have a little crust of batter around the outside. So we're going to spoon those in, along with any liquids that have accumulated. And one reason I like to make sure I let my blackberries sit for at least 15 or 20 minutes with the sugar is because I want a lot of this liquid to spoon over. Let it be known, Chef John likes a juicy buckle. So we're going to spoon those blackberries over the top along with any accumulated juices. And then we're going to go ahead and place that in the center of a 350 degree oven for about one hour or until it looks like this. That juicy fruity batter should be just set in the center. And then thanks to all that butter, that batter around the edge should be beautifully browned. And I know you want to dig in right now, but it's too hot to eat, too hot to enjoy. So we're going to let this cool down. And then while we're waiting, since we did include almonds in this recipe, I think we should go ahead and toast some sliced almonds in butter and garnish the top. So that's what I did. Just in a small pan on medium heat with a little bit of butter. We're going to toast some sliced almonds until golden brown and crunchy. And then we'll go ahead and scatter those over the top. And by the way, my personal recommendation would be to serve this cold or at room temperature. But it is good warm, and a lot of people do like to serve it that way. So you decide. You're the boss of your buckle. And once that is to our desired temperature, we're going to go ahead and cut a square. I decided to garnish mine with a little spoon of creme fraiche. And then I decided to garnish my garnish with a little sprig of mint. And then I believe it's time to grab a fork for the official taste test. Just a massive amount of sweet, juicy berries enveloped in a batter that's kind of soft, moist, and custardy in the center. 
And as it moves to the outside, it gets more cake-like. And of course, around the edge, you got those buttery, crispy bits. And by the way, I'm assuming you know I made up that story at the beginning of the video on why this is called a buckle. But I will give you the real, truthful, and much less interesting story on the blog. Although, you know what? Speaking of buckles, I'm going to suggest you loosen the buckle on your belt a couple notches. And instead of serving this with a microscopic spoon of creme fraiche, you instead serve this with a giant, giant scoop of vanilla ice cream. I'm going to be honest, I was trying to take a cuter picture. I mean, visuals aside, that's really how you want to enjoy this. But other than that, I absolutely love this recipe and hope you give it a try soon. So head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy. Enjoy.